Our Bay Area innovator today is Madison Nguyen. Madison and her large family of nine escaped Vietnam on a small fishing boat when she was four years old. In the middle of the night, my parents woke all of us up and to board my dad's fishing boat. And my dad only had a compass. They left because they didn't want to live under the communist regime. She was later one of the first Vietnamese Americans to serve on an elected school board in California. But I didn't know I, I was going to get elected. With that, I just felt electrifying at the time, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure I serve the community in the most righteous way. In 2005, she made history by becoming the first Vietnamese American elected to San Jose City Council. The rise in homelessness, the rise in crime, a lack of affordable housing, people are feeling unsafe, there's so many uh, smash and grab activities that are happening in the community. And so you have to wonder, you have to ask yourself, why is this happening? After serving the city for eight years, including vice mayor, she worked for nonprofit and business advocacy groups. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. If we see something that's not working in a community, then we should be able to do something about it. This is Bay Area Innovators, and I'm your host, Steve Espas. Madison, welcome to our program. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me today. Well, great to have you here. So I want to ask you about your journey to America. You came here when you were four years old. Why do you think your parents took such a big risk. You know, you came in a fishing boat, a small fishing boat on, on a sea with your whole family. Why did they take this huge risk to, to leave Vietnam and come to the U.S.? Yeah, thank you for, for that. I actually left when I was four. So my parents uh, felt that after the war, the Vietnam War ended in 1975, um, they felt that if they live in Vietnam, had they stay in Vietnam, uh, their children would not have the opportunity for a great education. Um, they were looking for economic opportunity as well. So during that time, many families uh, in Vietnam actually decided to escape the country, uh, and we were one of those families. So in the middle of the night, my parents uh, woke all of us up, and uh, there were seven kids at the time. Uh, they woke all of us up and to board my dad's fishing boat. And my dad only had a compass. Uh, he was a fisherman, but he knew that in order to get out of Vietnam, we need to sail west, and that is to come to America. So we were stranded at sea for about a week or so, um, and then we were rescued by a Philippine freighter who actually took us to one of the uh, refugee camps in the Philippines. So my family actually actually stay in these various refugee camps in the Philippines for a number of years uh, before we were sponsored by a Lutheran church uh, to arrive in Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah, you know, I share a lot of your story. My family escaped from Romania. It wasn't as exciting or as risky as your trip, but I can relate a lot to that. And also, you know, parents, when they, when they come here, they don't speak the language, they don't have the skills. It's very difficult for old elderly people to, right. to accommodate. So they mostly do it for their kids. Uh, how did your parents, your family feel when you were elected to the San, San Jose City Council? Well, you know, th that's so ironic that you asked me that because obviously when my parents decided to leave Vietnam, they left because they didn't want to live under the communist regime. Uh, after the war ended in 1975, uh, the North took over the South uh, and it became a, uh, a communist country. So. To them, politics was always viewed as very negative, uh, was viewed as uh, a lot of corruptions happening uh, with government officials. So when I told them that I wanted to run for public office here in America, truth be told, they were not excited. Um, they felt that we brought our, all of our children to America so that they can have better economic opportunities and educational opportunities not to get involved in politics, right? So that was like the, the overarching sort of sentiment that they felt at the time. Um, and because of that, I didn't really talk to them much about my journey of running for school board or running for city council because I felt like I didn't want it to rub it you know, in their face, uh, so to speak. Um, but. Obviously, they're, they're my parents, so I'm sure that, you know, somewhere in their hearts they were very supportive. They didn't, they didn't articulate that to me, and we kind of kept that separate. But after I was elected, uh, they felt very proud because they realized that um, this is what I wanted to do. Running for public office, serving the public was something that I was very passionate about, and I still am. Today, obviously, they're very proud of what I'm doing, um, but it didn't start out that way. 
and you have a chance to demonstrate that politics doesn't always have to be dirty or corrupt. No, it, it doesn't. And especially local politics, it's uh, to me, it's having this incredible ability and opportunity to serve the public, uh, to make changes, uh, you know, at the at the local level, uh, to implement, to enact ordinances that affect uh, people's da daily lives in, a, in the most positive way possible. So to me, uh, I view politics as something that's very positive, uh, something that's constantly changing, and something that's going to provide a lot of uh, positive impact for, for families, um, you know, in a local community. I read about this story, I don't know if you remember, it was many years ago, that kids were stealing your campaign signs because your last name, is, it's, it's quite common. I think a lot of Vietnamese have the name Nguyen. And they were stealing the signs to put them in their home because they were very proud of it, but you didn't know what was happening and you thought people are stealing their signs. Wh what did you do when you found, when you found out? Yeah, that, that was a really interesting story. Um, so I didn't actually, I, I didn't know about it until I actually got a call from one of the parents. Um, but when I first ran for public office, obviously my last name is Nguyen, which is, I would say it's like a combination of Jones and Smith together. <laughs> That's how prevalent it is in our community. And so um, one day I received a call from you know a parent that says, "Oh, my son brought your sign uh, to school to show his teacher that. Uh, oh, look, this is my last name. Uh, you know, I saw it out on the streets, and and I think it's so great. Um, so I had to tell her, I was like, you know, I'm I'm so." proud uh, to have that last name and I'm glad that your son um, you know is very proud uh, to have someone running for public office with the same last name but um, you know I, you, you should tell him not to not to take those signs because I need those signs so people know who I am so they can uh, vote for me and support me but that just also goes to show that when I ran uh, for the first time um, after I was elected I, I was the first Vietnamese American woman uh, to be elected to public office in California so that was a, a tremendous uh, you know proud moment for our community not just for myself for my family but for the Vietnamese American community and you can see that being displayed with some of these elementary school students who also felt very proud uh, that the, the last name uh, was being presented in the most public way possible how did you feel? Uh, walk us through your feelings that, that night when, you f when the results are out and you know, you're recognized as the winner. H what did you feel like? The very first uh, time that I won back in 2002 when I ran for a position on the local school board, Franklin McKinley Board of Education, you know, I saw the results, which was like really, um, it was a very uh, you know, good result for me uh, because I ran against three incumbents and, and I was the only uh, challenger and I, I received the most votes. So. You know, it was just breathtaking at that time. It was unbelievable. Um, I thought, you know, this is something I wanted, that was something I wanted to do, but I didn't know I, I was gonna get elected. I was brand new. I was, I was a PhD student studying sociology at the University of California, Santa Cruz, right? Um, and so when, I, when that happened, I realized for the first time that um, the Vietnamese American community in San Jose actually uh, got really excited. Uh, they went to the polls, they voted, um, they were really galvanizing, um, you know, behind a, a, a young person, a woman of color, a Vietnamese American woman who wanted to do something uh, to bring change uh, to the school system. And so um, with that, I, I just felt electrifying at the time uh, to be able to be in a position where I know that, um, or where I knew that it was going to be tough, it's going to be challenging um, because I didn't really have any anyone um, you know before me uh, to learn from but at the same time I felt like okay this is going to be a brand new journey for me and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that um, you know I serve the community in the in the most righteous way. There are many families who risk pretty much their lives to come to the United States. Do you think we appreciate enough what we have here? since we don't really know many times what it's like in other countries? I do, uh, my parents do, and I believe that many fa immigrant families uh, in our community do. Uh, I, I do because when I first came here, um, obviously, you know, my parents, they didn't speak uh, English at the time. They didn't really have any professional skills um, with them. They, you know, they, they brought seven uh, children uh, with them to this country, right? Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, they had two more while, while we're living in America. So a total of nine, nine children. And we were so poor living in a small 
town at the time in back in the early 80s called Modesto in the Central Valley of the state of California. So because of the lack of their professional skills and their limited English speaking skills, um, they didn't really have any other options besides working in the agricultural fields of the Central Valley. So they, you know, they went out there and they start working at 5, 5.30 in the morning every single day, seven days a week, um, pretty much throughout the years until, you know, we the, during the non-harvest season, then they didn't have to work. But also they spent a lot of time working in the cannery as well. And with their children, all of us, including myself, uh, when we turned around the age of 12, 13, um, you know, we went out and worked in the fields with, with my parents to, uh, to support our family to make ends meet. Um, but, you know, it's, that's the way of life for us at the time. Um, maybe because we didn't know any better. We thought that, uh, you know, life in America at that time was way better than what we had in Vietnam. I get to go to school. Uh, I attended public schools um, throughout my life and until I went away to college. Um, I got to play sports with my friends. I had free lunches, um, you know, uh, at school. We had subsidized housing. Uh, we, had, we were part of the Section 8 housing programs uh, that we received from Sanslaus County. But we were happy. Uh, we were a happy family. My parents had hope uh, and a bright future for all of the children. So I think if you look at how, what, you know, the path that, that this great country provided for our family at that time, um, you know, we were very grateful. And I, and I continue to be very grateful uh, for what I have today and what I was able to accomplish simply just living in, in this country. A lot of Vietnamese are against communism because of the experience in Vietnam. Do you think that's true, and how do you feel about the, this, the system? I, I, I believe that everyone is, is against communism uh, to a certain extent. Uh, I'm completely against communism, uh, whether it's in Vietnam or other parts of the world, in countries where communism is still being practiced. We want to live in a democracy. We want uh, the, fr the freedom to be able to vote. Uh, we want the freedom to be able to um, you know, say um, and express how we feel. And I think that's one of the uh, greatest opportunities uh, living here in America is to have those freedoms, right? And if we can, if we can somehow uh, advocate for those freedoms in other countries, in the remaining communist countries, um, then we should do that. And I think that that's one of the reasons why a lot of Vietnamese American families that left Vietnam to come to this country, obviously that was the reason why my family left Vietnam to, to come to America, is to seek out those freedoms and opportunities. And this country has given that to me and, and to my families and to many, many families in our community. I want to ask you about Gandhi. I understand you're an avid reader of Gandhi's works. and. There's a famous quote, you must be the change you want to see in the world. Tell us about that. What's your understanding on it? I love that quote so much. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. The majority of my adult life was actually guided by um, that quote, and it continues to be guided by that quote. And the reason why it's so important to me is because, especially in my line of work, uh, we have the opportunity to create change. If we see something that's not working in a community, if we see something that's not working in the school system, if we see something that's just not working and we want to change it, then we should be able to do something about it. For me, I just don't like to sit around and complain about something when I know that it's, you know, it's not how I want to see it. So I need to participate. I need to get involved and find out what is wrong with it, and then trying to um, be a part of, of that changing system, right? And it could be from you know a little problem to uh, a, a big problem, but if you don't get involved, how would you know? You know what what can we do to, to change that? And so all my life, um, you know, I've always been I've always been that way. Um, let me just share uh, you know um, a very personal story. One day when I was working with my mom and dad out in the fields and uh, we were picking apricots, um, you know, I remember I was maybe about 13 or 14 at the time during the summer month, and my dad actually knocked over a, a, crate, of, a crate of apricots, all right? And so the foreman came over and he started using a lot of profanity and yelling at my father for accidentally knocking over this crate of, of apricots. And he was using a lot of like racist slurs, and of course I understood English, right? And so um, I got really upset. 
I, I went up to him and I was like this short, <laughs> you know, and he, he was a, you know, he was a, a bigger uh, man. Uh, but I said, you, you can't talk to my father that way. Look, our family's been working, on, you know, on this land for so long. I'm here like every summer working for you. You can't treat us like that. And, uh, and he got really, the foreman, he got really upset, right? And uh, he told me that, look, you know, if you don't like shut up, uh, you know, we're going to take this job away from your family and what are you going to be left with? So that was a threat. It was a real threat, right? So my, upon hearing that, my father, um, you know, he, he was really, he was afraid. So he pulled me aside right away and he said, look, like, just leave it alone. It's, we're okay, you know, like, I, I, we can't lose this job. This is our only job that, pro you know, provides for the family. And, and, and at that moment, I realized that no matter what we do, you know, for for um, for for this foreman and for for this company, uh, we're always going to be treated less than what we would want to be treated, right? And that's the first time I felt like I want to do something to make sure that farm workers like us, you know, do not have to engage in these kind of derogatory, um, you know name calling uh, situations, right? And so again, you know, that was the first time I actually realized that if I wanted to change something, that I need to be a part of it and r rather, you know, being on the outside looking in. And so I think, I didn't know it at that time, I was, I was really young, but looking back in hindsight, I realized what that quote mean to me, um, you know, and, and what it means to me moving forward. So when you work, when you serve the city in that position, what were you most, or even now, what are you most passionate about as far as politics? My passion uh, lies within having the ability to work with the community, work with affordable housing developers and the cities and partners to build more affordable housing for low-income families and seniors. The reason why that is so important to me is because we have so many families in our community that even if they were working two, three jobs, they just could not afford to live here. It is, it, it's a very uh, expensive place to live, right? And yet for many of these families, obviously, you know, they've living, they, they have lived here for, for generations. And just like myself, you know, let me be a little selfish and said that, you know, when my daughter, who's only 12 right now, but, um, when after she graduate from high school and go on to college, um, I like for her to come back to San Jose and live closer to me, right? And and I and I think that's something that as an elected official, as a public official, if you can do you, something to be more affordable housing to help families stay together, be connected. Um, you know, that's what I want to do, and that's why I am a big proponent of working with the state uh, delegations, working the, with our federal delegations uh, to bring funding back from the, you know, the federal government so that we can build more affordable housings for our uh, working families and also for our seniors. As a politician, power comes with it. How do you avoid the corruption that can happen in politics? because of the power that someone has? I think for me, um, being a politician or being an elected official, um, it's not so much about having power, but it's about how do you navigate like through the various issues when you have so many people that come from all walks of life having different ideas and want to make sure that their voice is being included uh, in the decision-making process. That to me is more challenging than actually having to navigate whether or not you have power or not. Um, at the local level, it's you are constantly entrenched in uh, the communications between you and your constituents, right? And, um, and, and people want to have a voice because that's why they elected their representatives. We live in a representative democracy where you know, voters elect a person that they think would, would represent them and represent their voice on the city council or on the board of supervisors or you know, at the, uh, in the assembly or in the state senate. So to me, that's what I see as a challenge every day is how can I work with as many people in my community to make sure that their voice is being included in the, um, in the decision, you know, um, in decision making process. Uh, and that is a very hard thing to navigate because everyone has different opinions about <laughs> different issues, right? Uh, my opinion might not be something that somebody agree with. Uh, but I think, I think for me, what I imagine and what I have been successful with is that I always want to listen and learn. And maybe that's because of my background being in education uh, as a former college instructor, as a former high school teacher. I, I, I constantly, you know, 
wanted to teach my, my students, and in return, I wanted to learn from them. And so I always approach every situation with you know, a mandate to myself that you should sit down, you should listen and you should learn and he really hear what is it that, that, that they want you to, to, to know, whether it's about them or a, about an issue. And that's how I, um, I always end up making policy based on what I, what I learned from my constituents, recognizing the facts on the grounds and being very pragmatic in terms of my approach in order to, um, in order to make good public policy. Now, you left politics. Uh, maybe eight years ago or so, mm -hmm. and now you're attempting to come back. Tell us, why did you leave and why you want to come back? Um, so I was termed out uh, after serving nearly 10 years on the San Jose City Council. I was termed out at the end of 2014. Uh, and then after that, I went to uh, work in the private sector. I ran a nonprofit organization, um, and I did a couple of different things. Uh, one of the reasons why I decided to uh, come back and run for county supervisor of Santa Clara County is because, like many families in our community, I'm frustrated with what, I, what I'm seeing out in our community, the rise in homelessness, the rise in crime, a lack of affordable housing. People are feeling unsafe. There's so many... Uh, incidents of retail thefts, uh, smash and grab activities that are happening in the community. And so you have to wonder, you have to ask yourself, like, why, why is this happening? Again, going back to Gandhi's quote is, you must be the change you want to see in the world. I want to see that change. I want to be a part of that change where we are going to fix these problems and how do we go about you know, trying to reduce crime or reduce homelessness. I have a, a good relationship with uh, San Jose Mayor Matt Mahan. If elected, I would like to work with him. I want the county and the city to work together to address the issues around homelessness because we do need both entities to work together. It's not enough for the city of San Jose to build uh, tiny homes and um, transition these unhoused residents into these uh, shelters, right? We need this, the county to step up and actually provide treatments and services so that eventually, um, you know, these unhoused or the unhoused residents can actually become self-sufficient, uh, get a part-time job, and actually integrate back into mainstream society or into their community. That's what I want to do. I want the city and the county to work together, and I want to have the ability to work with the city of San Jose to work with the mayor to make sure that we address these issues for our residents. What would you say it's your biggest accomplishment in your career? I, I'm not sure if it's, it's like a big accomplishment, but I'm definitely very proud of what I was able to uh, bring forth from, for my residents when I was serving on the San Jose City Council. Uh, when I was under my tenure, I was able to uh, build um, over a thousand affordable housing units just for my district alone. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to build three uh, brand new parks, which at the time our district was very park deficit. We didn't have enough parks for families and, and for, our, for the little ones. And so I was able to do that. Um, in San Jose? In San Jose, in, in my council district alone, actually, right. yeah. And then, of course, um, I was able to help um, build two big shopping centers also in District 7, the district that I used to represent, and that provided hundreds of new jobs for our residents. So those are the things that I'm very proud of, uh, especially like, you know, after I was, I was termed out when I drive around or taking, driving my daughter to school every morning and I, I would drive um, along the streets with these affordable housing units and I see families out there, I see uh, seniors walking around the parks, it just makes me smile that hey, I, I, you know, I had something to do with that, that I helped make that happen. And, and to me, that's what, that's what local politics is about, is being able to um, improve people's quality of life, uh, bringing something to them that otherwise they would not have, um, if, you didn't have the, if you didn't take the initiative um, you know, and bring these amenities to our community. How about your biggest mistake, especially since you were the first Vietnamese to be in the city council, you didn't have someone to learn from in that sense? Oh gosh, Steve, I think that would be a very long list <laughs> of, uh, of the mistakes that I've made. Um, you know, there were, I, I've made several big mistakes in, in my political career. And simply because I didn't know. Um, I was very young when I uh, was elected. I was 27 years old when I was elected to the school board. I was 30 years old when I was elected to the San Jose City Council. And like I mentioned earlier, and you mentioned uh, that I didn't really have anyone who came before me. Uh, there wasn't another Vietnamese elected official who came before me that I can, you know, call them up and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going through these, um, these you know, uh, 
hardships right now, what advice do you have for me? I didn't have anyone. Um, I had community members, but they were not in the role that I was in. So because of that, um, you know, I made a, a lot of mistakes along the way, and I learned from them, obviously. I think that's the most important thing is that um, it's okay to make mistakes. Th they say that's why pencils have erasers. <laughs> um, but it's also very important that you actually learn from your mistakes and that you don't repeat them again. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, I just wanted to thank you for the, this opportunity um, to be able to share a little bit about my background and my story. And I hope that this will inspire um, other uh, young people, especially uh, you know people of color, uh, to run for public office. Um, I might not come from a conventional political family. Um, I definitely, you know, uh, was not born into wealth or anything like that. But I was able to use, uh, you know, my my principal hard work uh, and uh, do what is right uh, and run for public office. And so, if I can do it, any anyone can do it as long as um, that is one of their passions. Thank you so much for your time. First, with the Miss American on the San Jose City Council. Thank you. Thank you very much.